So the first type of JSON data type that I wanna bring to your attention is string. String in JSON is a sequence of alphanumeric characters. So here's a sample code. Now, a couple of things I wanna bring to your attention here. See, in this sample code, I have the curly brackets. This is the starting bracket. This is the ending bracket. And these are curly brackets. Then space, then we have double quotation marks, and we have a word maker. Then we have a colon, then we have a space, and by the way, we don't need to have this additional space here, but I did it for clarity. Then double quotes again, and the term Ferrari. Now once again, what is the term maker? This is the key, and what's the value for that key? Is Ferrari, okay? So whenever you're reading a JSON code, you're always gonna see that it starts off with a curly bracket. It ends with a curly bracket. And in between, you have key value pair. Here, we're looking at a string data type. Now, based on this understanding and logic, I'm gonna continue building on, on it and explain other data types. The next data type is number. JSON uses JavaScript's double precision floating point format. What does that mean? Here's a sample code. Start of curly bracket, space. Once again, we don't need a space, but I'm adding a space to make it look neat. And by the way, spaces don't matter. White space, I should say, does not matter in JSON. So that's important for you to understand because in some programming languages, adding space is a major sin. In JSON, that is not the case. So to read the sample code here, once again, we have starting curly bracket, ending curly bracket. In between, we have two bids, bid one and bid two. The first bid, bid underscore one, I have a colon and then space and number 100. Now notice there is no double quotes around number. We do not put quotes around numbers. Once again, this is key value. Key is the bid is the key and 100 or bid underscore one is the key, 100 is the value. And then bid two or bid underscore two is once again a key and 100.99 is the value. And also notice between bid one and bid two, I've got a comma and then space and then the next string, so to speak and then the next key value pair. So you see when to separate key value pairs, what we have to do is we have to have a comma in between different key value pairs. Now let's look at Boolean. Boolean is basically binary. What that means is you only have two possible values. It's either true or false. And Boolean is treated as string values. So here's a sample code. We're saying, is it Ferrari? Of course it is, so it's true. But if it said, is it BMW, we would have said false. You get the idea. The next one is null. Null is essentially an empty value. So what does the code look like? It's saying, is it Roma? You're saying it's null, meaning it's not Ferrari Roma. Roma is a completely different model of Ferrari. We're looking at Enzo. So it's a null. Some additional data types. Now object, it's an unordered set of key value pairs separated by a colon, like I explained earlier, contained within curly brackets. The, the values must be unique strings separated by comma. So here's a sample code, an engineer, and that engineer has a name, Naj, company that this engineer works for, dub dub t, and the city this engineer lives in is San Jose. Now, a couple of things I wanna bring to your attention. This is the start curly bracket. This is the ending curly bracket. What about this curly bracket? Well, notice we have another starting curly bracket and an ending curly bracket. Here, this is an object. Engineer is an object 
that has multiple attributes within it. So a name is an attribute, a company is an attribute, a city is an attribute, but that all of these are contained within the object called engineer. So what we're doing here is we're basically defining an object. As I said earlier, white space doesn't matter. So what you would do is you would typically take, instead of writing the entire code on a single line, what you can do as best practice is to add white space. And what that does for you is brings more clarity. So as you can see, the same code here again provides a lot more clarity to what we're trying to achieve here. So here, once again, the object is engineer and contained within that object are different attributes, which are string values essentially, because we just learned strings and it's defining that object. Now, a couple of things I wanna to bring to your attention from the white space standpoint is, once again, we have double quotes around engineer, we got a colon, then we got space, and then the curly bracket. And as you can see, for each string, there's a comma in the end. That's another string, and there's a comma in the end. But check this out. The third one, there's no comma because this is the final string that defines our object called engineer. So because this is final, we are ending it with a curly bracket, which started right here, and we're ending it right here, okay? So this is very important to notice for exam and also for real world purposes, there is no comma at the end. So definitely keep that in mind. And by the way, to verify your code that you wrote, ideally what you should do is go and Google the term JSON validator. And what that will do for you is help you validate the code that you wrote. As a matter of fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me look up JSON validator. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the first option that's available to me. So let me go ahead and run a JSON validator against the code that I showed you a moment ago and look what it did. First of all, it gave me a confirmation down here at the bottom that it's a valid JSON code, which is beautiful, right? So this is great. And also see what it did to my code. Even though I wrote the code in one line, it beautified my code by adding white space to my code to make it easier to understand. So you, once again, you see the object engineer and that object has all these strings. And as I said, there's no comma in the end. To prove my point, I'm gonna go ahead and add the comma and hit validate JSON code again. And check this out. It's saying there's an error on line five and we know what the error is because we added the extra comma on this line. In other words, this validator is pointing us in the right direction. It's telling us there's something wrong with this line. And by paying close attention to it, we can fix the problem. So if I were to remove the comma again, hit validate JSON, once again, it's telling me it's a valid JSON code. So I encourage you to get into the habit of using a JSON validator as you practice writing JSON code to ensure you're actually writing good code that is bug free. Now the final data type, and this one is a very important one, is an array. An array is an ordered set of key value pairs separated by a colon. However, the difference between an object and an array is, array is contained within square brackets instead of curly brackets. And I'll show you some sample codes to hit this point home. The values must be JSON supported data types. And so what are the data types? Well, string, number, Boolean, null, object, or array. Now, what's interesting is you might be going, isn't this an array? How could you have an array within an array? Well, that's a mind twister, I know, but that's the idea. An array is a very comprehensive data type that pretty much contains all the other uh, data types and it has the ability to have nested arrays and nested objects within it. So it allows for a very complex 
data type that has a lot of objects and arrays within it. So a sample code could be CIS students or computer information st st uh, systems students. So here I'm showing student name Bob, age 28, employer is dub dub t, then comma, another student named Dan, age 31, employer Facebook. Now let me add some white space to this code to make it easier for you to understand and let me bring a couple of things to your attention. So look, here we're starting at CIS students and then we have a colon and then check this out. We have a square bracket followed by a curly bracket. And then we have the first student, Bob, age 28, uh, employer, dub, dub, T. And then we have the ending curly bracket. Then we have a comma. And then we have a starting curly bracket for the second student. So student is Dan, age 31, employer, Facebook. And then we have the ending curly bracket and then we have the ending square bracket. And then we have the ending curly bracket to end the entire code. So as you can see, here we're showing computer information system students, let's say in a college or a university, and different attributes associated with each student in that course. Now let me show you another sample code. So here the student name is Bob, age 28, classes, Comp 101, Soft 101, Net 101, Employed, False, Employer, Null. Let me add white space to it and let me give you a quick walkthrough of this code. So here I'm saying I have a student name, Bob, age 28, classes that this student is taking, Comp 101, Soft 101, Net 101. This student is not employed, employment is false, and employer is null. Because they're not employed, so of course there's no employer to report. Now one interesting thing about this example for you guys is, check this out, we have all the different data types covered here. We got the string data type, we got the number data type, we got an array here. We got the Boolean data type. And then we also got the null data type. 